Thank you, Jesus. Well, my friends, here we are. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you for this glorious day. <laughs> nice and steamy here. <laughs> But uh, we got to make it somehow. Thank you, Laura. Thank you, Father. Come on in. Come on through the traffic, the cyber traffic, and be here in this virtual space. Thank you. God bless you, dear sister. Good to have you here. As you come in, uh, may I ask you to invite someone to join you? Share, 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 share this um, with your friends and encourage them to be in this room today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. We bless you, Lord. As you come in, just begin to worship. As you come in, just begin to bless the Lord. It's a prayer gathering. It's virtual. I can't hear you, but you can hear me. Yes. And so, Father, we thank you for this day. It is the day you have made, and we choose to be glad and rejoice in it. Hallelujah. It is the day the Lord has made. Whatever is happening in your world, it is still the Lord's day. Hallelujah. And so we declare that because it is a day he planned, a, a day he established, a day he ordained before we got to today, he already knows what he wants done for today. He already knows what he wants to see happen. And so, Father, we come in alignment with the will of heaven for today. We come in alignment and agreement with the purposes of God for today. We say, God, may the agenda of the kingdom be our agenda today. Hallelujah. So we ascend, God, right now in our worship and in our praise and our adoration of who you are. And we say, may the, uh, the blueprint and the pattern and the design of God come to us today that we may know what to do. We may know how to do it. We may know when to do it. Hallelujah to the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. So yes, good, good day. And we are here at the well with our time of prayer. Again, I would encourage you to share this with your friends. Invite some other people to be with us. Today, we are focusing our prayer time on the miracle is in what's left. The miracle is in what's left. I think um, as humans, we have a tendency to uh, mourn and, and to groan and to whine and to murmur over what we have had, I mean, lost, what we have lost, what, what, what we no longer have. And by the way, I am not talking about, you know, ignoring grief or ignoring loss or pretending it's not, it hasn't happened. It's not true. My God, I think most of us, you know, have, have known significant losses in the last five and a half months during this pandemic, all kinds of losses and loss is not just somebody dying. It's, it's loss of, um, you know, physical connection and, and hugs and, and relationships and gatherings and celebrations and, um, income and business and I mean think about church and the way we now gather and it's just a lot and we can sit and mourn over what we no longer have and I think if we do that the reality is we will become heavier and heavier sadder and sadder and more you know just more depressed honestly and and so I believe God is saying listen if you believe, that's what he said to, to Mary and Martha in John eleven forty. If you would believe, you would see the glory of God. So the issue is not what my circumstances look like, because it might be gloomy, it might be depressive, it might look hopeless. But if I would believe in the God who does miracles, Waymaker, miracle worker. Yes, we, we don't want to just sing these songs and have a good time. We want to actually experience the miracle working power of God in our situation. So come on, my friends. Invite someone in the room with you today because we are believing that God is going to show us. He's going to unveil to us that the miracle is in what you have left. 
when God said to Moses, go back to Egypt, bring my people out, lead them out of bondage and take them into the promised land. We know that at one time, 12 spies went in, 10 came back with an evil report <laughs> and the whole company of the Israelites became disillusioned and thought, well, we're going to die and this is not going to happen. And they did die, not because God didn't want them to go in, but they murmured and complained and wondered in the wilderness. And as a result, they all died except Caleb and Joshua. I want you to say, Lord, I am among the Caleb's and the Joshua generation. I am among those who will go in to the promised land, to the possession and to the occupation and to the occupying rather of that which God has entrusted to us. I am not dying in the wilderness. Come on, declare that with me now. I will not die in the wilderness, but I will advance and I will move into my purpose and into the miracle God has for me. I am a Caleb, I'm a Joshua. Gideon, Gideon thought, oh my gosh, don't use me. You can't use me. I can't even, I'm, the, I'm from the, 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 the smallest clan. I'm from the Benjaminites. I, I, I don't have a, a, a lot. Sometimes you feel like that. I don't have much. But this is what God said to Gideon in Judges 7.7. 7. Gideon, go in the strength you have. Ooh, when God looks at you complaining, Lord, I can't do this. I don't have what it takes. I'm not qualified. And God says, go in the strength you have. Go in the strength you have. Somebody capitalize those words and put it in the chat. Go in the strength you have. In other words, whatever you have left over, whatever you have remaining, go with that. Go with that because all you need is the affirmation of God, the approval of God. Come on. All you need is God's grace with you and you can do the impossible. I can do all things through Christ. Philippians 4 and 13, who strengthens me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So when the disciples said, send the crowd away, we don't, we don't have what it takes to feed all these people. Jesus said, nah, you're not going to do that. What do you have? What do we have? <laughs> we just told you. He says, no, what do you have? Come on, somebody put the question. What do you have? What do you have? Ask somebody in here in this virtual room. What do you have? You have nothing. That's not how God sees what you have left. He doesn't see it as nothing. He doesn't see it as insignificant. He sees it as the seed. Somebody's put seed. He seed it, sees it as the seed. If you have seed left, then your miracle is in that seed. Hallelujah. You may think the fruit is all gone and, and nothing is left but the seed, the dry, shriveled up seed. But no, 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 no. If that seed gets into the right environment, if that seed goes into a conducive environment, then that seed can produce and that seed can bring forth because the life is in the seed. I'm asking you again, what do you have left? What is in your hand? God wants you to offer up to him today that which you have left. Five loaves and two fishes. All God needs to do is to breathe his breath on what you have left and the miracle will manifest. Somebody lift your hands and say, God, breathe on what I have left. You got to know what you have left. That little bit of talent, that little bit of skill, that little bit of money, that little bit of grace, that little bit of strength. Come on, Lord, breathe, blow upon the little I have, God. And yes, you may decide to break it. And if it's broken in his hands, if the thing, hallelujah, that you see as your future, gets broken in the hands of the almighty God. Woo! It is because it is already blessed. It is blessed already. And if he breaks it, it is because he now wants to broadcast it. It's now because he wants to dispense it. It's because now he wants to send it forth to others 
that they might become satisfied. Listen, we don't always understand the ways of God. His thoughts are not ours. His ways are not like ours. But, 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 but if we could trust him and trust his sovereign rule and believe that he is who he says he is, then miracles will happen with what you have left. What is it you have left? Remember the widow who went to the man of God and says, the creditors are coming? He says, what you have left? Oh, I just have a little bit of oil. That's enough. Your little bit of oil is all God needs. But you got to go into a space, an intimate space where you shut the door. An intimate space where you lock out the noise. Where you shut out and drown out the chatter and the discouragement and the fear. And you shut the door on those things. And you say, God, it's me and you. And you allow God to begin to pour out pour out. The more she poured is the more it multiplied. Declare now that there will be a multiplication effect on what I have left. Declare now there will be a multiplication, multiplication effect on what I have left. Just begin to pour out. Just begin to break. As they broke the bread, the more it multiplied. As they broke the fish, the more it multiplied. As she poured the oil, the more it multiplied. Stop holding on and hoarding. Some of you have stopped giving. Some of you have stopped tithing. Some of you have not been as generous with your family and your neighbors and your friends as you used to be. Because as you're, cons you're looking at your, what you have left, you're saying, no, I can't give. I can't, I can't, I can't share. But that's a mistake. That's an error. Because the truth is, if you give, Luke 6 and 38, give and it shall be given back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Will men pour into your bosom? God will stir up people's heart. God will put your name on somebody's lips. Oh my goodness. Do you understand we have limits as to how God will do the miracle? And he says to you today, take the limits off. Because I am God, I am sovereign, I am in control, and I can do the miraculous. He can put somebody in your path that you have not even considered. He can put your name in some, on somebody's heart. He can make somebody have a dream about you. He can give somebody your phone number and say, call that person. And you're saying, I never met you. I don't know who you are, but God met you. And God knows who you are. My God. Yes, like he said to, to Hagar, in Genesis 6 and verse 13, the Hagar, Hagar, when God called out to her and said, why are you crying? And God showed her some water. God showed her a well with some water. Oh my God, she thought for sure, Ishmael and I are going to die in the wilderness. We're going to die in the desert. And God say, no, you won't. There is water. Give him some water to drink and let him be revived. And she gave this name to God, el ro -he. el ro -he. Oh, the God who sees, sees me. Come on, somebody. The God who sees, the seeing God. Ooh, ha, ha. Don't let me get happy by myself. Don't let me get excited by myself. Show your joy today for the word of the Lord. Touch the heart and touch the thumb. Clap your hands. Hallelujah. For the God who sees, sees you. I'm going to marinate in that. El Rohi, the A E L R O I, the God who sees sees me. He sees me. He sees me in my distress. He sees me in my lack. He sees me in my anguish. He sees me in my mourning. He sees me in my pain. He sees me in affliction. He sees you, and because he sees you, he's gonna provide for you right there. Sometimes he takes us out of the, the, the situation, but oftentimes God comes in the midst of the situation. He comes in the fireman. He comes in the water. He comes in the flood. He comes in the adversity. And he says, I am with you in the valley. I'm not just with you in the mountaintop, on the mountaintop. I'm with you right now. I'm with you during the pandemic. I'm with you right now with the uncertainties. I am with you and the miracle is in what you have left. Oh yes, oh yes, 
Oh yes, I know. I know. Trust me. It's not much. Trust me. It looks like what, what this can do. What can this do? What can I do with this little bit of flour, this little bit of oil, this little bit? Bake the bread, man, and give it to the man of God. Give it to the woman of God. Bake the bread, Lord Jesus, and give it to that neighbor. Give it to that elderly person. Bless somebody else and watch the Father in heaven. Say, because you trusted me, because you chose to believe, I will do the miracle. I believe that Gideon's army being reduced to 300 was an opportunity to see the miraculous, the miraculous power of God take 300 men, 300 men, and destroy the Midianites. The miracle is in what you have left. 300 men, a little bit of oil, only five loaves, two fishes, only a little bit of strength. Come on. Come on, somebody. You used to have lots of romance and, and, and flame in your marriage, and now it's like you're living like roommates. God says, what, what you have left? If he's still in the house and she's still around, God can take that and make a miracle. Come on, somebody. Or oh, the child that used to be around and be so much involved in your life, they have been astray, estranged, and you're thinking this is over. No, 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 no. If they still, if they still answer your text, if they still call once a month, there is something left. Oh my God. So they left you. Many left you. But you are mourning too long over who and what is no longer here. Listen, God says, I want you to look again, step back and look again at what you have left. See differently. When you begin to gain a different perspective, I am telling you, God, God, God's going to make you repurpose. Ooh, and he's going to make you reimagine. Ooh, and he's going to make you do some things differently. Repurpose, man. Repurpose that thing. I was watching the news yesterday, I think it was, and this company here in America, they, they do t-shirts, okay? So they, they, they design t-shirts, and during the pandemic, they closed down, sent home all their workers, all their employees, but they have repurposed their business because they realize mask are a necessity right now and we can make masks so they're making masks and selling masks and business is booming Woo, jesus i pray right now spirit of the living god for the creative somebody put your hand on your head for the creative innovative concepts from heaven I pray right now for that entrepreneurial spirit. I pray for God, you allowing us to see things differently and for us to be able to seize the opportunities you give us. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you're going to give dreams. You're going to give, Lord, um, thoughts that are going to come to us as we pray. Listen, if you are praying and you're in the presence of God and there's a prevailing thought, write it down and trust the Holy Spirit that that thought is from the Lord. And you keep praying and say, God, lead me, guide me, show me what to do. Show me how to turn this thing over. Show me how to repurpose this thing and watch God take what's left and perform a miracle. I don't know about you, but what's left is is, is key to your miracle. What's left is important and more significant than you realize. Stop mourning, says the Lord, over what has gone, over what is no more. Stop it. Dry your tears because the tears are causing blurred vision. The tears are causing you not to see correctly. The tears are causing you to not believe and trust the miracle working power of God. You got to see things differently. You're going to seize the opportunities he put before you. Now don't pray. And when your miracle comes knocking at the door, you run into every and say, Oh my God, it's a ghost. No, 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 no. In Acts 12, when they prayed, Peter showed up because God sent an angel to bleed Peter out of prison. Ay, 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 ay. And when Peter showed up at the prayer meeting, these unbelieving non-believing believers, these unbelieving believers, because we pray, but we don't expect, we say, Lord, I can't believe. What do you mean you can't believe? Why are you praying? You're supposed to be praying in faith. You're supposed to be praying with conviction. And they said to the poor young girl, 
Nah, you're seeing things, man. It can't be Peter. Peter in prison, but we're praying for his release. What? Are you telling me you're not going to celebrate when your miracle shows up? You better have eyes to see. You better have the vision to recognize that that which you have been praying for. Mm -hmm. Some of you don't realize it's, it's your prayers being answered. The diminishing and the reduction and the subtraction is your prayer being answered. Because you want to see the miracle working power of God. But you're going to need a situation that requires a miracle. A situation that requires a supernatural intervention for you to know that God is still the same yesterday today and today and forever if you need a miracle today lift your hands uh, because god is at work not just over there not just over there but right here right in your life right in your home right in your marriage right in your family right in your mind right in your body right in your church and ministry right in your community right here say right here Stop watching somebody else's miracle and say, oh, God will do that for them, but not for me. You are not a stepchild. You are not a bastard. Say, I am a child of God. I belong to him. And the same blessing that is upon Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is upon me. I am a seed of Abraham, and I too am blessed. I too, I am chosen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The miracle is in what you have left. God is calling on some of us to consolidate, to collaborate, to begin to, to move out of isolation, to begin to say, Lord, where are my destiny partners? Where are those people that I must run with and I must dream with and I must strategize with? Come on. Some things you're going to need other people. When, when Peter, Peter threw the net on the other side at the command of the master, and the fish, the draw for fish he caught was so much that the, the, the nets wanted to break. Ah, they called out to their neighbors. Don't be selfish. Don't be selfish. God wants to bless you, but the blessing needs to move through you. You see, some of us don't realize that God wants to get it to you. But first, he has to establish and determine whether he can get it through you. Oh God, if he can get it through you, he will get it to you. Lord, I want to be a conduit. Lord, I want to be a channel. Lord God, bless me so I will be a blessing. Bless me so I will then look for people to bless. Some of us want to hoard and put up for rainy days. And yes, you should save. And yes, you should invest. But you should also give. Make sure you're a giver because not everybody's going get blessed in the same way. Not everybody's going to see the heavens open up in the same way. I believe with all my heart eh, that some of us are going to be like Isaac. We're going to sow in this pandemic. Ooh. We're going to invest in this pandemic. We're going to give in this pandemic and we're going to see the hand of the Lord cause a multiplication. Yes, even when everything in the, in, in the natural and every logic is saying, Hold tight to what you have. God is saying, I'm going to multiply what you have left. I am going to increase what you have left. I am going to cause supernatural. Oh God, I don't want to just read the Bible and say, wow, the oil never stopped flowing. I want to see my own oil. Whatever oil represents in your life. Say oil, don't stop flowing. But note, you've got to pour it out. You've got to pour it out. Bread, fish, don't stop multiplying. But note, you got to break it. Ooh, Jesus. If you like me, you like things a certain way, God's going to disturb you a little bit. You're going to feel out of balance. You're going to feel like you lost your equilibrium. Because in that moment, he says, trust me. Don't trust your skill. Don't trust your talent. Don't trust what you can do. Don't trust your smartness. <laughs> Proverbs 3, 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Mm -hmm. And lean not onto your own understanding. In all your ways. Acknowledge him. And he shall. He shall direct your path. Beloved, that's the word. This is the word of the Lord over us today.
The miracle is in what we have left. So Father, we lift our hands. I feel his grace. I feel his anointing. It's upon you right where you are. It is flowing over you right now. It's breaking off the discouragement. It's breaking off the fear. It's breaking off the disillusionment. It's breaking off the dis depression. Uh-huh. In the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody. I know it's been a long, dreary road, but the Spirit of the Lord says, I have been with you. When the two men walked on the road to Emmaus, Luke 24 and 24, Jesus himself walked with them. Woo! Jesus himself showed up in their disillusionment. Jesus himself showed up in their discouragement. Jesus himself is walking with you right now, right where you are. So Father, with our hands up raised, if you can, if you're driving, keep your hands on the wheels. <laughs> But Lord, we lift our hands and we choose to believe what you say, not what the situation looks like. We choose to say, Lord, interestingly, I have my, 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 my account book, my bank book here, um, because my, my checkbook, because I need to pay someone who's at the back working. So yeah, even now, Lord, great that I have the, the object I need to lift up. <laughs> Somebody, you may want to prophetically lift up something. It might be something regarding health, relationship, money, business, ministry. Come on, Lord, have mercy. We lift up what's left. Lord, would you breathe? Would you cause your breath, your ruach, to come upon my little? And would you make life come to that which seemingly is dead? Yes, valley full of dry bones, Ezekiel. But the question I ask you, man of God, woman of God, can these dry bones live? Can they? Can I restore what has been stolen? What has been taken? Can I restore back to you a sound mind? Can I restore back to you sound health? Can I restore back to you your children who are distant? Can I restore that marriage? Can I restore that ministry? Can I restore that business? Can I restore community? Some of us are feeling kind of like helpless regarding community and, and our nation and, and the things around us. Can I, can I do that? Can I cause a rebuilding? Yes. Can a nation be born in a day? Can I do that which the human mind says is impossible? Yes, I can. So, God, we turn our hands upwards like antennas to heaven and we receive strategy somebody say i'm gonna receive in the midnight hour strategies i'm gonna receive as i meditate upon the word of the lord night and day and night night and day and day and day and night and day <laughs> and day and night our uh, god in the stillness in the silence in the quiet i'm gonna hear you mm -hmm. i'm gonna receive i'm gonna receive that which i need for my life for my living for my future, I am going to know according to Isaiah 30 and 21. Whether I turn to the right or to the left, I'm going to know. I'm going to know. I'm going to know. I'm going to hear a voice behind me saying, this is the way walking it. Beloved, receive divine impartation. Receive divine downloads. Receive divine strategies. Receive divine insights. Receive divine knowledge. May the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of intelligence, the spirit of grace, the spirit of courage, may they come upon you. And may you, with, with, with the wisdom of God, strategize plan believe as you are writing that god is flowing through that pen and causing you to write your future in a different way Woo, jesus father i thank you for your children today and i thank you for your breath upon what's left i thank you that even though it's been broken it has already been blessed and because it is blessed it will multiply it will be more than enough 
it will be more than enough. God is moving you from just having nothing maybe or just having the bare minimum to just live in paycheck to paycheck or just not just living by a little to having more than enough. So now you will be a blessing to others. Say, I am blessed to be a blessing. Hallelujah. I am blessed to be a blessing. God, you can get it to me because you can get it through me. I will not hoard it. I will not be selfish. I will not try to contain it. But God, I will pour out. And the more I pour out, the more it shall increase. In Jesus' name. Beloved, God bless you. Welcome to this new month. Welcome to September. It is a glorious month. Yay. And God bless you, Sister Ursula. She's on. Today's her birthday. God bless you. Happy birthday to you. In eight days, I will celebrate my birthday, but I'm celebrating all month. And one of the ways I'm celebrating my birthday is to open the well for guided meditation and prayer. So guess what? Watch this page. I will post the dates. You are invited. Yes, if you want to fly from New York or from wherever, you can. But you can come to the well and breathe. You can come to this glorious anointed space that I have been blessed with and you will find that you will encounter the peace, the shalom of God. So yes, yes, yes. My birthday, I'm giving, I'm giving, I'm giving this month. I'm giving and I will guide you in those times of meditation and prayer. And I'm telling you, it's going to be meaningful and you're going to be like, Ah, oh, I needed that. So if you know anybody who needs to de-stress, to be refreshed, to reboot, tell them the well is open for guided tours and um, prayer and meditation. It's all going to be outdoors, nothing inside. So guess what? We are doing it safely. And you will need to register because we would limit on any given day the number of persons that can come. So watch the page, all right? Listen, friends, share this with someone. I did ask you last week, get, get me to a 1,000 likes before September. And you have done well. You have done well. But we need seven more. <laughs> seven more. All right, so some of you love the broadcast and you like the post but you are yet to like the page. There's a difference. <laughs> so if you're one of those watching, go ahead, do that for me today. Like this broadcast, but also go to like the page, invite your friends to like the page. And perhaps before the day ends, I would get to that thousand, all right? Let September be the month when everything gets blown off the charts. Let September be the month when things get turned around. In three weeks, we are celebrating Rosh Hashanah, which is the Hebraic New Year. It's God's New Year. And I am excited because it's an appointed feast and it's an appointed time that God meets with his people. And I want to be in a place of preparation for what heaven will release. Love you, my beloved. God bless each of you. See you next time.